Well, may the force be with us because Obi-Wan Kenobi is officially over. I just got engaged. I'm in California on vacation. Just got done at Disneyland. It's been an insane week. I'm not on my normal set, but I had to talk about the Kenobi finale. We've been reviewing it from week to week, and I'm here with you guys staying up till midnight. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section, as well as hit that like and subscribe button, because I'll definitely be catching up and absolutely covering Andor, Bad Batch, and much more Star Wars content, as well as all that geeky content. So if you're into that, definitely check those out, and I will be back with those very soon. But of course, let's dive into Kenobi's finale, which was a finale that I was very very interested in because this is a show that is very much split the fan base all over again and after seeing this final episode I do have some thoughts because I, there was stuff in here that I loved absolutely loved and in the end of the day when it comes down to the solid conclusion of every character of every storyline I loved the thematic avenues of that, what this show really much had to say about Kenobi, about Reva, about Vader, and all the parallels that kind of mixed inside of there, especially in the way that the story was more told in a character study like just how Deborah Chow said back at the press conference a couple months back, where she compared this series very much more in the vein of Logan and the Joker than to any other thing in the Star Wars universe. And after finishing the show, and now when I get home from vacation, I'm going to be diving into the show once again to really much see how does it work on a binging process to see and feel, do we still feel that element? Because just from thinking week to week, you definitely feel that character study. It is but a broken man who has this guilt overbearing him of what he had done, what he had failed to the Jedi Order, and especially everything to Anakin, the person that he was supposed to train, and where that led him to, the man that we met in A New Hope. And there's that whole little middle section that there must have been a story that some people, we can argue all the time, was needed or wasn't needed, does it break canon, doesn't, but it's an interesting story to take a character, and for me, I think this finale absolutely solid, hits a lot of the different marks, and before I start diving into the Kenobi part, I do want to dive into some of my issues with this finale. And I think it really much just comes down to Reva. Now, I absolutely really loved where Reva's story ended up going. And I'm sure they're leaving the door open to just say, hey, maybe she'll get a spinoff. And I think Moses Ingram is phenomenal in the role. I think she's been great in every single aspect. There's some choices that I think her and Deborah Chow did, but I think in the end of the day, it again parallels Anakin Skywalker in such a way that really much makes sense. So for me in those moments, I liked them and I dug them and I know it doesn't work for everyone. That's totally fine. What didn't work for me was that she should have died last episode. Hands down, I think it still would have finished out her exact story of what we had gotten. And that's it. I don't feel like there was anything else left to be there. I think the emotional touch between her and Kenobi in this episode was fascinating and great. And some of the parallels, again, of her going after Luke was really good and a little bit way better executed than I thought it was going to be. But it still took away from the pacing and everything else that I was really much expecting in this. And I actually think this is one of those episodes that I would have liked maybe to been eight minutes shorter from taking out that stuff to really much adding in there. And I think just one more solid line or touch here and there with Reva in last week's episode would have really, again, touched in and honed into the point that we are getting. But again, Lucasfilm, they must have maybe another story coming out. I, I don't know. We will see the characters still out there alive in the Star Wars universe. I'm I'm interested, I, I guess, because I think Moses Ingram is, again, a phenomenal actress. But that, that is the one aspect that I don't think worked in this episode completely. Even though I do like where they left her in the conclusion, the pacing kind of did take away from everything that we really did need the conclusion to, which was Kenobi versus Vader, which very much, thank God we got that. I was getting very nervous that it was going to be just Kenobi versus Reva. It wasn't that. This episode very much centers in on that battle. You know, Revenge of the Sith, this is not the high standards of Revenge of the Sith of them jumping around and battling, but this is a very forceful, strong fight between Kenobi and Vader. And Kenobi knows, I have to leave. I have to get away. He tells Leia goodbye, tells the crew goodbye, and says, you guys need to do, you guys have been protecting the Jedi for all this long. I need to go. And Vader follows all by himself to this planet. And it is, you know, not one of the best stylistic type of fighting scenes, but it is a 
great one still, again, because of the thematic avenues, because of everything that kind of goes in there, and the emotional buildup that is built up over the last five episodes that I was really engaged in. I loved this fight scene. Again, the choreograph was decent, and I liked the way that it was actually shot, but the thematics, the emotion between that, especially everything that had come from the prequels, really hit home. And in all the different avenues of seeing Kenobi just getting wasted and wasted by a very powerful Vader. And I think the way that they handled Vader in this show overall was satisfying, was awesome. This is the Vader that I've always wanted to see on the big screen. And again, we've gotten certain glimpses of him in Clone Wars, especially the parallel that we get from Clone Wars, or Clone Wars, from Rebels in, of course, within Ahsoka when Ahsoka fought Vader. We get the same thing, of course, but when Obi-Wan hits the helmet, which I'm jumping a little bit too far ahead of myself because one of the things I loved in this episode was, again, when he got beaten down, when Vader is throwing all the rocks on him and he's still holding it up. Even beforehand, he had asked for Qui-Gon. I thought we were going to get Qui-Gon and we still didn't, at least not yet. He's holding those rocks up and when he thinks of Leia and Luke, of why he's still there, why is he still living, it gives him and reminds him why he's doing all of this. Why is he a Jedi? And it made me want to clamor and clap and get emotional. And again, I'm a Star Wars geek. The Force is in me. And all of us feel different. But I love that moment so much. And when he bursts out and goes after Vader and they have that last epic duel. Well, not last epic duel because in A New Hope we get that. But this duel in the series. And then when he hits his helmet and you see the parallel. And you see Kenobi just go, I am so sorry for what I did to you. I never wanted to let that happen. And seeing that was an emotional crux because then hearing, again, Hayden Christensen wasn't in this as much, but everything that we did get of him, I think a lot of us shit on him a little bit too much. I think he's always been great. The prequels didn't have the best dialogue, but from what he was given in this, I think it shows that he's a really damn good actor. Even though, again, it was very minuscule. And a lot of it does go to the editing and certain things that Deborah Chow decided to do in the Star Wars community and everything in this and the cast and crew. The way that they had the voice sometimes going in and out and him just looking at him and just saying all these things that I killed Anakin Skywalker, I am Vader, all these things. And Kenobi's just like, okay. And he understood that he didn't do anything, that Anakin was the one that shoved him in that way and that no way, shape and form could Kenobi have done anything different. Now, again, when you look at Phantom Menace and the Duel of Fates and that maybe if Qui-Gon and Jim was still alive, maybe, just maybe, Anakin wouldn't have turned to the dark side. We can look at that because these are the duel of the fates. But when you do look at elements like that, there are different parallels, but that no matter what Kenobi could have done, Anakin was always treading towards that side. And maybe there was stuff Kenobi could have done, but I think this just goes as far to show that Anakin was the way and was the person that had killed off that version of the Padawan that he was training and that, of course, his best friend at the time. And I love that, again, because thematically it's rich and he just leaves him there. Because the next time we do know that they see each other is a new hope. And I think everything they kind of led up there, and again, the stuff that he says to Reva and the revelations with one another, again, you could just dive into all that. Thematically, it's rich. His goodbye to Luke. His goodbye to Owen. His goodbye to Leia when he comes back with Lola. These are all elements that add into everything that we know in A New Hope. And I do... I, I love Ewan McGregor in this role so much. I do not think we need another season of Kenobi. I do not think we need another season with him at all. I don't think there's any more added story you could tell me. I think this was perfect. And the way that it satisfies my feelings for this. Was the show overall perfect? No. But, and I still overall think this should have just been a movie. I, I do not think this should have been a six episode series. And if it should have been a six episode series, it should have been way longer I think there was a little bit more depth they could have dove into and certain things felt a little bit rushed and a little bit clunky, but I overall think this should have just been a movie, hands down. But overall, I really loved Kenobi. Uh, I loved everything Ewan McGregor did in this role. It was great to see him come back. That final duel was great. And really just expanding the Star Wars universe in a different type of light and expanding the story that I think there was a little bit of details in there to kind of that were interesting to know that weren't needed but if you're going to bring back Ewan McGregor this was the way to do it and not everyone's gonna agree with that I totally understand and I can't wait to see your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section so again thank you so much you guys again for watching this bearing with me while I am not in my normal set but again 
I just got engaged. Pretty cool, very, very happy about that and have a lot of just thank yous to you guys because you guys staying up with me, watching these videos, talking with me about Star Wars has been one of the reasons that I was able to get a really nice ring for my girlfriend, support me financially and help. And it, it just means a lot because I've been able to do this and really earn and meet tons of different people who also just love doing the same thing. So thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. You guys are seriously all the best. Look forward to a ton of other movie and TV reviews coming up soon, especially Cassie and Andor. Miss Marvel episode three review will not be out this week, but I will be reviewing episode four. I'm mentioning a little bit of episode three next week. So if you're into Marvel as well, make sure to watch that show because it's pretty freaking good. So guys, of course, until next time, stay classy.